if someone gave you 50 million quid, which is, I was thinking about this last night, it's actually not that much money, because I started thinking about all the things I would do. Did anyone have that thought? Yeah. Actually, that's not that much. Like, when you get down to it, of all the things that you could do, maybe we should say 500 million, right? Or a billion? Yeah, do you know what? Because there's so much money out there in the world, isn't there? And I have this really strong belief that the more money we make and the more money we have access to, the bigger difference we can make to ourselves, to our families, to our businesses, and ultimately to the wider world. Because a lot of money circulates doing bad things. So if we can get a lot of that money in to do good things, then I think that's a good, good way of looking at money. I posted on LinkedIn this question the other day, I don't know if anyone saw it, and someone said, it's not money that changes the world, it's people. And I thought, yeah, but if you gave people money, then all sorts of great things could happen, right? <laughs> but anyway, so, yet, we have all these dreams and aspirations, don't we? We want to make sure our kids go to a good school, that could cost money. We want to make sure that our businesses thrive, that costs money. We want to fundraise. We want to do all sorts of great things. Yeah, we want to change the world. Think about those things that hold you back, and particularly if there is any um, fears that hold you back from making the difference that you would truly love to make, if you could. If, if it was a sort of unlimited dream-like world, which it can be, all right? What holds you back? Is there a fear around um, not being liked or not being good enough or not having the time or not having the money or not having access to resources or people, whatever it is, normally we have something that's like a recurring broken record that goes on every day. You're not good enough, you're not good enough, you're not good enough, you're not good enough, you're going to fail, you're going to fail, you're going to fail. And these things are really, really very nice because they keep us nice and safe, actually, from doing the things that we are really born to do. But if we can get over them, or start to get over them, could you imagine the difference it could make? So I'm going to propose to you today and tomorrow that everything that you want is on the other side of this fear. If you can imagine, it's sort of like a wall in front of you. Fear, here I am. Um, I'm going to get you, but I'm going to keep you safe. Um, so, in your journal, and I want you to find like a back page or something of it. I want you to write down. Now, who in the room has multiple fears? <laughs> it's okay. I could do a laundry list of mine. Um, but we're going to just focus on one, because there's normally one that's sort of a recurring one that's sort of underneath a lot of them. But anyway, if we can focus on one today, then you could take this technique and use it another time for the rest of them. Okay? So, find a back page and answer this question that's on the screen here. And just write it down as a sort of, if you can, gut response. Just let your pen go. The fear that stops me making a bigger difference is. Take a moment and um, if you would like, I invite you to take, close your eyes and take a nice deep breath. <sighs> yeah. And just Slowly connect with yourself a little bit. For those that did the mindfulness session with Gosha this morning, it's going to be easy because you already practiced. And I want you to repeat after me in your head. Right, it doesn't have to be out loud. Words to this effect. Thank you, fear, for keeping me safe for so long. You made me worry, you made me plan, you kept me safe. You stopped me failing. And I appreciate all you've done. but I've just spent a lot of money coming to an event called Mad Global Leadership. <laughs> so I'm thinking that we're done.